Hey everybody, it's Brian. Welcome to the 149th Qt tutorial with QML and C++ programmer. We're going to cover how to integrate the two a little bit today. Um, special note, I did actually put a video about Qt Creator freezing. This is part of the reason why I haven't really done a tutorial in a while. So I have to open and close the program like a special way, and if I don't, all of Qt Creator locks up. So you may hear like some harsh language here shortly if I screw up, but uh, we'll see if we can get through it. All right, so we're just going to go new project. We'll say a cute quick application here. And we'll call this mouse monitor. Why not? And we'll make sure I got the right kit selected. Work's been calling me all morning too, so I may have to pause this video, deal with work stuff. I don't know why work won't just leave you alone on the weekend. You know what I mean? It just seems like, you know, I just want to be left alone. Just want to write code and play video games. <laughs> all right, so... Um, we're going to get rid of that main form here. And my throat's like a little scratchy. Um, I don't know if it actually comes out in the video, but uh, my uh, my allergies are like really fired up. So we're just going to do a standard width and height. I'm going to call this ID root. All right. And uh, we're going to make a couple properties here. And the premise of this program, let me run this is that we're going to have a drawable area where we can kind of paint and don't get excited. This isn't going to be like the next Photoshop or anything, um, but we're going to be able to paint. We're going to have a couple buttons on the top so we can like uh, clear the drawing and then save the drawing. Um, and when I say save, I should premise, we're looking at this from the perspective of you're in like a programming shop and you're doing the front end code and somebody else is going to do the back end code but you have to give them the bindings so that whatever you do in QML on this window, they can actually pick up on the C++ side. Now, I should note, if I click this little orange button here, Qt Creator itself is going to lock up, and then I'll have to close Qt Creator and reopen it, so I have to hit this little but red button down here. Um, royal pain in the butt. drives me crazy. Um, like I said, you may hear some harsh language if I accidentally do it. So we're just going to make a property. This is going to be a real number. We're going to call this last x. Whoops. Zero. And you know, I don't even know if we really need these or not. I'll have to look at my code a little better. I don't think I do. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to not do that. Sorry, I was like uh, lost in train of thought there. Well, I was going to make it a global property in my example, and I'm looking at my notes going, oh, I, didn't, I don't think I used it as a global property, so we're not going to do it. So tools, we're just going to make a row here. And in there, we're going to make a, uh, I need to add import. So between allergies and work, I'm like really scatterbrained, and I apologize if it's kind of not coming through real good. Quick controls, 1.4, because I don't have two installed. And we're going to make a button, call this ID clear. And I'm in a bit of a rush because I want to take my daughter to lunch too. So I've got like allergies, work is calling, and I'm on a kind of a deadline here because, you know, I want to hang out with my kid. And we'll call this button save. If I could spell save, geez. All right, so there's our row in all its glory. Let's run this, make sure it looks the way it's supposed to. So we've got clear and save. Now we are going to introduce something new here. Um, it's called a canvas. Canvas is an area that lets you draw. Hence, it's called a canvas. Call ID. Let's call this uh, canvas with a lowercase c. That way it doesn't get confused on me. And we're going to say anchors.top. Is that top? Yeah, top equal tools.bottom. So really all we're doing is we're saying the top of the canvas is going to butt right underneath this row, pretty much to how our code is structured, right? And then we're going to just say the width and the height. All 
And now we want to uh, want to do an on paint, and we're gonna do cool stuff. And let me scroll up a little bit here, and in here we're gonna make a mouse area. And the mouse area itself is where, well, you guessed it, we're going to track the mouse. So we're going to say ID, we'll call this area. We don't really have to give it a name. Acres fill parent. So, yeah, my daughter gets allergies like crazy bad, and it's, I don't know. Usually I don't get them as bad, but today they just seem to really be messing with me. But, you know, the window's open. And uh, everybody's like mowing their yard because it's like the first real nice day. So, mm, did I not do that? No, I didn't do that. All right, this is where I got confused in my notes here. Let me back up here, and that's the sound of my girlfriend slamming the front door. We're gonna say property int last x. Get rid of all this garbage, and we want that to be a zero by default. say last y. So what last x and last y does is it tracks the position of the mouse cursor. Um, so when we go in here and we go on pressed, we want to actually set that position. So we're going to say canvas last x equal. And then here we're going to say mouse x and then canvas last y equal mouse y. Oops, just bumped the microphone there. All right, so that's the mouse area. And all the mouse area is really doing right there is just tracking it. So, and then we want to say on position changed, meaning when the mouse position actually changes over the canvas, whether the button's pushed or not, I don't really care at this point. We're going to say canvas request paint. Now, what Request Paint does, this is a little confusing, but we want to explain it super quick. Let's save and run this. When we move the mouse over, it's actually painting right now. It's calling that Paint function. Or I should say it's calling Request Paint. So what Request Paint does is it determines if any of this canvas area is quote unquote dirty, meaning something's changed. And if it is, then it'll call this Paint function. Whoops, the Paint function. If nothing's changed, we're doing this and it's saying, is it dirty? No, is it dirty? No, is it dirty? No, because we haven't done anything, right? So once we actually do some stuff, we'll see it start painting. I almost clicked that orange button. That would have made me very angry. It would have been like X-Men, you know, Hulk smash kind of stuff. All right, so <clears throat> I had to clear my throat for a second there. Now, what we want to do here is we want to say ver. CTX, which is short for context. Name's not really important, but we're going to do a get context. And here we're going to say 2D. So what we're doing is we're getting the 2D canvas. Um, it's actually very important that you do that because without it, you won't be able to do anything with this canvas. So as you might have guessed, I believe there's also a 3D canvas, but we're going to mess with the 2D canvas. So we're going to say CTX. And notice how IntelliSense is no longer our friend. So you got to kind of, you know, get creative a little bit and uh, do a little guesswork and sometimes just read the notes. So we're going to say line width and we're going to say ctx dot stroke style, which I kind of giggled when I saw that stroke style. I imagine you're having a stroke and you're trying to do it in style. Well, maybe I just have like a dark sense of humor sometimes, but <laughs> all right. So we're going to make the line width too. We're going to make the color of the stroke. Think of this as a canvas that so you're doing a brush stroke. Okay. It's going to be color red. You can do all sorts of colors, you can do rainbows, you can do patterns, gradients, fills, whatever, right? And then we're going to say ctx dot, and then we're going to begin path. Whoops. And then uh, we're going to say ctx dot stroke. And then in between the begin path and the stroke, the stroke is actually like, imagine you have a paintbrush. And you walk up to a canvas and you actually commit the stroke, meaning you put the brush to the canvas and you roll the paint down. So you're stroking it. That's the actual painting part, right? So what we want to do now is we want to ctx.move to. 
and we want to do last x. Oops. Help if I did this. Last x. Why did that little guy pop up? I'm having nothing but problems today. Last y. So what we're doing is we're saying move to the last known position, which we're setting in the mouse area here. If you don't, it's going to start at the 0, 0 because it's not set, and you're going to have this weird line. So and you can play with that kind of after you get the code up and running. And then we're going to move to. Whoops, we did the move to. I'm sorry. We're going to do line to. Last x. Last y. Let's save, run this, and see what happens. And you see invalid property in line two. Huh? We screwed something up. It's probably something very simple. Yeah. Run that again. All right. And notice how it's not doing anything. What did we do wrong here? Hmm. Let me look at my code here. So we got begin path, line two. Or I'm sorry, move two. Oh, yeah, we didn't set the... Ah, I'm stupid sometimes. All right, so what we got to do... Um, like I said, my allergies are kicking my butt. We need to set the last X and last Y. Mouse X, last Y. Area dot mouse Y. Now let's run this. See what happens here. Now we have this beautiful little line. And we can draw. Like I said, this is amazingly not the next Photoshop. Now, if we didn't put that little move to in there, right here, and we just start drawing here, it would actually draw a line. It would go bam, and there'd just be a straight line between the two. I wanted it so you could just kind of, you know, freestyle and do whatever here. I know it's like a masterpiece. I should just print that out and sell it for like $30 million. All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to build a C class. And we're going to incorporate it into this interface so that we can tell that when the mouse moves, we can clear and save. Um, and there's a couple little gotchas we got to throw in there. Um, the first being how do you get how do you get how do you get QML to know the class even exists in the first place? The second being how do you communicate between QML and that class? So there's a couple little gotchas, and we're going to go over them right now. What we're going to do is we're going to say my mouse is acting kind of crazy here. We're going to make a new C++ class. We want this to in inherit Q object. And we're going to call this mouse memory. So this is just a normal Q class. We've seen these a million times. Um, what we need to do a little bit differently here is we need to add some special code and we need to let QML know that it's actually available. So let's go in here. And we're going to have to include a few things here. We're going to QML engine and include QML context. Now, what's going on in here? We haven't really talked a whole lot about this, but this is the QQML application engine, and then the engine's loading, and when it's a string literal, we're loading this QML file. That's how Q loads it. Well, what we can do is we can actually grab this bad boy and say, hey, while you've got it loaded, add some properties in here. So what we want to do here is... <clears throat> Sorry, I gotta clear my throat. It's like getting kind of scratchy. We want to do a, a Q scope pointer, Q scoped pointer. Sorry. And I also gotta include mouse memory. That would probably be helpful. See, the problem with allergies is it's like a double-edged sword. Because if you take the allergy medicine, you're just like hit for the rest of the day. I mean, you just, you might as well just lay in bed. But if you don't, you feel like laying in bed the rest of the day. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. 
So Qscope pointer, in case you kind of slept through some of my tutorials about that, what this does is it actually, you can see how it's using the new keyword. So we're making a pointer in memory. Um, or I should say we're making an object out on the heap. And what this does is it wraps that pointer inside of a class. So when this class goes out of scope, it's actually going to delete that pointer. So in the deconstructor, it's literally saying, you know, pointer delete, or actually delete pointer. So we have got this new variable called mouse. And what we're going to do is we're going to say engine. And we're going to root context. And this is probably not the most elegant way of doing this, but it works. Um, I tried a couple different ways, and they've actually changed things around quite a bit. Whoops, I don't want context object. I want context property. Um, they've changed things around a bit. So some of the examples you find out on the internet just don't work. So at the time of this recording, this is what works for me. Whew. So what we're doing now is we have a scope pointer. We have our engine, which was part of the default program. And then we're saying engine root context set context property, meaning we're setting a property and pointing that property to a specific object. We're going to call that object mouse, and it's going to point to the mouse.data. Now, because this is a scope pointer, mouse.data points to the actual mouse memory. Seems confusing, and you can actually get away with not using the scope pointer. You could just say, you know, mouse equal new mouse memory, and then just do mouse instead of mouse.data, but you're going to have that dangling pointer out there in memory. Um, not really a big deal because when you close the application, it's going to wipe out most or if not all the memory for you, at least it should, depending on the operating system. But we don't know what operating system this is going to run on. So we want to do things securely and we want to use the Q scope pointer so that when the, when the variable goes out of scope and it will, when the application exec returns, meaning a program stops, it'll delete that memory. Oh man, what a pain. Memory is such a... Such a pain in the butt. All right, so let's run this, make sure we don't have any little boo-boos. All right, so our program runs. We didn't get any error messages down here. And nothing's actually working yet. So what we need to do is we need to go in here and work in our class. And we're going to say Q object. Let's do uh, include Q debug. And we're going to include Q point. All right, now, what we want to do is just do a simple test, meaning we want to call a C++ function from QML. We just want to get that very basic thing working, just to see how it works. So we're going to do a Q invocable void test. And if you're wondering what Q invocable is, Q invocable is a macro. And inside that macro, it adds all the code so that when we call void test, it knows what to do and how to communicate. It's very similar to like a signal and slot under the hood, um, at least from a conceptual idea. Um, technically, it's very, very different, but just think of it as like a signal slot. And then in here, we're going to go Q debug. And we're going to say hello from C++. Now, in our actual QML file here, let me flip to my notes. Eh, my notes, there we go. We want to actually do something, just so that we know this is working, right? So let's kind of isolate our code here so we know what's doing what. And we're going to just say mouse.test. We're going to call that function. Now, how did I get mouse? You're looking at this going, okay, I see mouse X, mouse Y. How did I get mouse? Well, we got that from this engine root context set context property mouse. So our mouse memory class is actually going to be called mouse because the, you know we're pointing to the data in the Qscope pointer. I know that seems a little confusing. Just remember the Qscope pointer wraps around this object. To access that object, you have to call data. So literally in the set context property, we're making a new variable called mouse, and mouse is going to point to the variable mouse memory. Not entirely accurate, but you get the concept here. All right, now in our class, we're just going to say test hello from C++. So we have our variable called mouse. We're going to call the function test. 
and it should say hello from C++. So let's save and run this. All right, now, kind of, you see how it already said hello from C++ because we already painted. Now, if I just do this, you're going to see a whole bunch of them. So let's, let's make this actually do something. Let's go in here. And let's say Q invocable. Whoops. I got to really watch the clock here. I'm running out of time. Clear. And let's just make a few functions here. My daughter gets like really antsy if I don't like tell her when I'm coming. We're going to say double x and double, whoops, double y. And we're going to make another one here. And this one's going to be q point f for a floating point. So notice how we have got uh, two functions that are the same, but they have different signatures. So we're going to do uh, function overloading here. Man, I am just not with it. Maybe I should take some allergy medicine. I'm like trying to talk, type, and not sneeze at the same time, because I'm sure you guys would love to hear me sneeze. All right, so um, Q debug. It's been kind of a crappy weekend. I've had kind of a crappy week. It's just, it's just one of those where you just want to like sit around the house and do nothing all weekend, but you got stuff to do. Save the data and then uh, adding, and we're gonna say, uh, let's uh, let's do this a little different. Here. We'll say Q point. Because our developers want a point, right? So I'm just going to add that in there. Adding float. Whoops, float. It probably won't actually be a float. I'm willing to bet it's going to get cast as an integer, but. I just want to show that we can call this differently. So really we have a our test, which we know is working, clear, save, add, and then add. And the two adds are different. One's going to add an xy, and one's going to add a point. Um, so we'll show how to convert the xy in QML to a point. Um, not really going to do a lot of the backend code. Actually, we're not going to do any of the backend code. This is as much of the C++ as we're going to do. I'm just literally just showing you how to interface between the two. Um, I don't want to get into saving and loading and things of that nature because to do it, I would have to show you how to use uh, models, which is going to really go well beyond the scope of this video. But you can, you know, actually use QList and just write raw, you know, binary right out to the file and stuff. All right, so let's uh, let's look at this here. So now we've got our our little mouse here, and we are going to let's mouse dot add last x last y and we're going to yeah this is going to require a little bit of finagling clearing is actually kind of a pain I don't know why they made it so hard so we're going to get the 2d context we're going to say ctx reset Save. And I think we actually have to do request paint. Yeah. Because we can reset it, but then we got to actually request paint. All right, so let's save and run this. What we've really done is we've added in our clear function. So in the button click, we're going to just say, you know, do this. Um, which, you know what? 
let's just not do it this way. Let's go into the canvas and make an actual function in here. Um, Cause we've never really covered this. So let's do a function in here. So we're going to make like a custom object really. Um, just because I like keeping things encapsulated. And actually we can just canvas.clear. So that's going to call this clear down here. And let's get rid of that for a minute. I don't remember if I need to call it or not. That's why I'm getting a little confused here. So, so in our button, we're going to call canvas clear, which is our custom function, canvas clear, which calls the get 2D context, resets the context, and it calls mouse clear. So we're interfacing with our C++ in the back end. I think we actually have to request painting when we clear it. Um, we'll find out. Um, in the save button, we're just doing mouse save, which interfaces with our C++. And we're calling mouse.add, which adds the last x, last y. All of this is in our C++ class. Save and run. Hopefully nothing blows up. All right. And you can see how already it's done a adding q.00. So if we do this, you can see adding q. Point, hello from C++. So every time we move this mouse, we can see as long as the mouse is being held down that it's doing that. If we click save, saving the data. So that's where in C++ we would actually save. And if we clear, yeah, see we got a we clear the data in the back end, but we didn't clear this canvas out. So let's actually I think this should fix it. If not, we're going to pretend that it fixes it because I got to get going. Let's just do a quick drawing. And yeah, see that so that does actually clear it. So that clears the interface and the back end. All right. So let's, um, that's how we did that. Now we want to actually convert last x, last y into a point and call that other one. So we're going to say mouse.add. We're going to say cute point. And we want to do last x, last y. And that'll convert it. So what we're going to see here is that we're going to add point and then we're going to add a floating cue point. So let's run this. Yeah, so adding adding float. So you can see how it's doing the two different ones here. It's kind of like a dorky smiley face, I guess. I don't know. The modern art. And then we can clear it, we can save it, we can do all sorts of stuff. So that in a nutshell, um is how to interface with a C++ class on a very basic level. There's a lot more you can do. Um, and how to, you know, send data out to that class and call functions and how to actually put a function inside your QML. And we introduced the canvas a little bit. I hope you found this educational and entertaining. Um, thank you for watching. Feel free to uh, go out to voidrealms.com. I have the source code for this and all the other tutorials out there and also if you have questions and concerns, don't try to email me. It'll just take forever and sit in my inbox. Go out to uh, my site, click this link, and join the Void Realms Facebook group. There's, I think we're pushing like 500. I don't know if we've already surpassed that. But we've got a lot of people out in this group. And it's not just Qt and QML. we got like Java, .NET, Python. I mean, just tons of people out there, all different walks of life. They can definitely help you out on whatever project you got.